A708, good morning. Can you hear me? Hey, uh, Girl Boss. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. yeah, just another rough start morning for me and my show. Yes, so actually at the moment it's just you and I on the show, so I'm sure everyone will come back, but yeah, what can I do for you? Uh, well, I had a few comments and questions. Uh, first of all, uh, well, I'm, I've never grown ever in my life, so I'm not too uh, familiar with the, 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 you know, the, the, the terms in that, but I, I'm, I'm, I've been watching your show for like the past two months, three months, I don't even know how long, but yeah, it's been a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I'm seriously interested in growing my own, I'm in Illinois, so I'm not sure if you're familiar, but yeah, we got, we have a uh, medical, but yeah, we can't grow any ourselves. But it's uh it's decriminalized and shit, so I mean yeah, I'm willing to take the chance. But uh yeah, I'm I'm looking to be able to grow in like keep myself in uh I don't know how to explain, uh uh you know, I wanna be able to like have my own supply constantly. Constantly. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you mean, want you always I, wanna I, have I mean, a sack I, of weed. Yeah, you're not growing to have part time right, weed. Right, right. You want full time weed, of course. Right. Right, right. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm thinking like I don't know three weeks of smoking the same stuff, and then I need to switch off because my immunity or my my tolerance has gotten used to it, you know. So I mean, taking everything into account, uh, what am I going to have to do? How much am I going to have to spend to like my system going? Um, are you only going to smoke it, or are you going to eat it too? Uh, no, I can't eat it. Uh, I have a uh, uh, blood clots. Okay, I hate eating it too. If you're only going to yeah, smoke it, it, literally, is 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 like a half ounce, three quarters an ounce a week enough for you? Um, do you no. Need, <laughs> do you want an ounce a week? Yeah, like three quarters, maybe an ounce. Yeah, yeah, like an ounce, maybe three quarters. Okay. So, all you're going to do is get yourself, I'm going to post it up here. T5, four foot, eight bulb. So, here's the... You're going to buy, whoa, that can't be right. Woo, wait a sec. Let me check this out. Dude, this, I, I, I okay, I'll just, I, I, this is, this is, I have never seen them this cheap. Um, I just posted the link. I have never seen a, a, a shipped a four foot eight bulb T5 for 115 good grief I almost don't want to keep that on the uh, show because like local people watch my show too but listen you're just going to get yourself one of right, these right. and you're going to get yourself the uh, the four foot version too yeah oh my gosh Woo. so those are crazy um, those are some super low prices. Wow. It's the death of the hydro I store when I can't make that. money off a of T5. Okay, so you're just going to want one of these eight bulbs and a four bulb. I mean, you might as well buy two eight bulbs for the price. All right, in total, uh, everything's going to cost me, like, how much would you say? Um, the two lights will be 200 230 somewhere in there. You won't have to buy an AC. <clears throat> you won't have to buy a CO2 unless you want something, you know, like a TNB or something like that. You won't have to do anything like that. All, right. All you're going to do is just, you know, I mean, you could just hang these things from a coat rack. Also, do you have a like a starter kit, like a like you know the I don't I don't know if I need like air supply and all that shit with this with the setup you're talking about. But no. uh, I mean, yeah, but the whole flush bulb. But. No, I don't really sell the hardware. I sell the grow book and equipment guide. I sell literature, but I don't really sell the hardware. There's a lot of people selling hardware. I don't know how they ship it at this price. I I couldn't do that. So I don't even try to compete with them. Right. Um, all you're really going to do is buy a bag of soil. I mean, right, does it make the, the, the soil? I mean, does that make much of a difference or? Um. Yeah, you know, perfect. you know, it's like any hobby. Does any one thing, I don't know, if you put spinners on your car, does it make a difference? Does a paint job make a difference <laughs> with shitty rims? Does There are a lot of little things. So, 
you will need like hydro store soil. I mean, you can't buy hardware store soil. You have to buy hydro store soil. It's 20 bucks for a bag instead right, of five. Right. So there are a couple of things right. that you'll have to do. Um, just some basics, but yeah, I mean, you're not, listen, you're gonna buy one part nutrient. You'll literally buy one part Fox Farm, one grow, one bloom, one CalMag from Botanicare, one flora nectar from GH, and then buy a Clonex Microbes. That's, uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much the basics. If you go beyond that, um, it's a, it quickly becomes diminishing returns. So the more you do after the basics, the less you're going to get for each thing. All right. All right. All right uh, also, I wanted to comment a couple of weeks ago, you guys were uh, commenting about, uh, <laughs> about the CBD and uh, the you know the effects it has with weed and uh, you know like kind of when you get too high you smoke some CBD and it brings you down. Uh, sorry, ask you that again. That? Sorry, ask. Sorry, say that again. Oh uh, yeah, like a week a week ago or maybe two weeks ago, uh, there was there was uh, some comments being thrown around about CBD and the, the, the uh, purposes of like smoking CBD if, if you're on the euphoria CBD or not the euphoria weed like THC. Like CBD counters THC, it brings you down. Okay. And also, uh, I just found this out. CBD also brings you uh, down from tripping on acid. It, it sobers you right up, dude. I'm not joking. It, it sucks. It has been so long since I took five hits of acid and drove back from San Francisco, hate Ashbury Park, with three sheets in my pocket. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. When's the last time you took a hit I of acid? Uh, it's been like two months. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Yeah, yeah. Tripping for 12 yeah. hours. Oh, my God, anymore. And I used to like acid, too. I remember that shit. Oh, yeah, you said that. Yeah. That's brilliant. All right, what's your yeah, next question? I've never, tripped, like, I've, never, I've never tripped for over eight hours, though. Woo. All right, anyways, next back. But, um, what are you, what, you're, you're in Nevada? Yes, Henderson. I didn't know Nevada had uh, any legal or any recreational or cannabis or anything with weed. Because last time I visited there, I, I asked the cop, I was like, hey, how, how bad is it get caught with weed? He's like, hey, he like kind of, he grunted and snickered. He's like, hey, you don't want to get caught. And I just took yeah. it as like, yeah, get away. And I had a bag in my pocket. Out there. Historically, Nevada would arrest you for 20 years for seeds. But it's been recreational for some few weeks now. So not only did Nevada what partially legalize it they passed something a couple of days ago that said because they passed an emergency measure in nevada that says because the facilities are running out of weed and because the lines are so long i think they're going to start selling it at liquor stores so oh my god that'd be awesome listen that's been my observation all along the day that it can be sold in a liquor store and it becomes the marijuana, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, you know what I mean? Like marijuana, tobacco, alcohol, explosives, firearms, porn. Like whenever that group like gets hold of it and it can be transported across state lines, growing cannabis will be over the next day. Because I know, right? Think of, exactly. Just, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Go on, sorry. Go on. Oh, sorry. Go on. I was just gonna say I don't know why the United States isn't wise enough and like you know completely unlegal like unlegalized or what that much I say like unbanned marijuana. Do you know why it was banned in the first place? Tell me. Uh, in the thirties, uh, the paper company got together with like a lobbyist, and the lobbyist you know got the Congress and everybody to believe that uh, weed was like negative, it was bad and shit. I don't know if the, the rumors about you know make new lazy and shit was started back then, but yeah, it's all propaganda. It's all bullshit. But yeah, um, the paper companies and the, the lobbyists, they fucking, they banned it, they, they, they put a, a, a bill before the Congress to, uh, to pass, to pass uh, you know, fucking marijuana to be legal or be banned, basically. <laughs> because they realized that hemp would be a better source of paper. And they, they had already dumped all the money into the mills and shit for the fucking saws and whatnot for the, the lumber. And then they had like, they're not gonna like do a three, six, or one, one, whatever the fuck. I can't talk. <laughs> I'll tell you, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, I'll give you an example of, of one of the problems that I have, not just with legalization, but the government and how it handles 
just our day-to-day -day lives. We look at improper incentives and we hear about this Wells Fargo thing where the Wells Fargo employees are opening up millions of false accounts because the improper incentive was such that if employees open up more accounts, they get a bonus. So it's an, it's an improper incentive. In politics, it is almost a 100% improper incentive. And, and I'll tell you why. The longer marijuana remains illegal, the greater the debate, the longer they can stretch out the debate, the longer politicians, lobbyists, and lawyers get paid. See, if it was legal, I mean, who discusses trash day? It's so small. But as soon as you get something legal, I mean, you look at the DEA and they're not going to, nobody's overdosed on cannabis and they're still going to keep it a scheduled drug. Right. Why? Because they're in the middle of their 15 minutes worth of fame. When is the, no one's going to come and ask for Vicodin legalization. So there is an improper incentive in our government. For instance, we look at healthcare. Ah, dude, I'll solve this one in a second. All doctors have to go through a government program at some point where you're treating people at some level, entry level. And here's our health care. As part of you getting your experience, we do it like the nail salon does it at the local educational college, the local tech college. You got to put in your hours with regular people for low pay. Oh, my God. What we don't have is an incentive as a carrot with the stick as punishment. Usually what we have is a rabble that has all sorts of different opinions and no one can get together. What's required is each problem you look at and you go, how can we best tap our resources to encourage people to do a good job, punishing them for doing a bad job? I'll tell you, you have all these people addicted to Vicodin. I would spend zero dollars on all of them and I'd put us in orbit around the planet and I would launch us into the solar system. Oh my God, we're paying for people to get off drugs when we should be in space getting off this planet because Fukushima is going to kill us all. Oh my God. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, and so... Yeah, I mean, the, the system as is, it, it's so broken, it's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, the drug thing, the, the best part is, the best part is the individual states are legalizing drugs. They spend billions of dollars a year fighting drugs. Then billions of dollars right. a year go to the cartel for their drugs. So basically, our government's playing war on drugs, spending billions. Not, o not only that, but they're spending millions and bill. I don't even know how much, but to, like keep these people like incarcerated in these jails, and and now they're they're, they're privately owned. So I mean, what where the hell's the incentive to release these people? Of course, they're not going to get fucking paroled. See, the problem is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the, the problem is when 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 we solve a problem with too many chefs. There are too many conditions and not enough reason. And I think that happens with anything. But all right, that's enough on that. So, listen, you got any more cannabis questions? Because the show's already off to a disaster start. Um, and it's not even 9 o'clock. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any way to, like, make the, the plant produce more THC than it, you know, would normally? With, like, I don't know, nutrients or something like that? Uh, you know, perhaps there might be something. I mean, every nutrient company comes to my store and tells me their shit produces 20% more. I, I will tell you this. There's no product that works until your garden is 100% problem free. Until everything goes the way it's supposed to. There are no products. For instance, Clonex Root Maximizer. If you overwater your plants, put your light too close, or you burn them with too many nutrients, it doesn't matter if you take a clone and you try to put it in Rudex Clonex rooting gel. It doesn't matter if you add Clonex microbes to it. If you killed your shit from too much light, too much water, too many nutrients, none of these products can work. Right, right. Right. All right, okay, listen. Okay. All right, listen. I appreciate the call. Thank you. All right. Yeah, good. keep it up, man. All right, thanks. Okay, so let's see, what did I learn today? Well, last week, two weeks ago, I learned you never talk if the, you think, you know, if you're sitting in front of the mic. Last week, I learned you never stand in front of the mic unless you're, I mean, the camera, unless you're prepared to be on the camera as my fat ass sat there shirtless last week. And this week, what do I learn? Oh, my God, you got to keep the... You got to keep the live stream on private or you end up sitting here for 20 minutes getting high, doing nothing, making sure everything works, eating your breakfast. At some point, we should have had a little introduction. 
That was supposed to be like 10 minutes in the beginning of the show. Dude, I'm telling you. The shit just isn't what you think it is. The problems are never what you think they are. Okay, you also probably noticed my set's different this week. All right, it's only going to be like this for the weekend. Um, if you remember, I've been redoing my store. Okay, <clears throat> we got pretty far, like all the way to the back corner. And so we've set up a couple of tents back here, but I didn't have any place to put my show. So we took, we took out the tents. We have them here in this middle of the store right here. I've got these three, three by three by five foot tents that go right here. But the store is coming along pretty nice. So I thought what I would show you today is this is my trade show booth, not the bong. Okay. Maybe the coffee. Not the mic. But I have to go to the Portland Expo. I don't have to go to. So I'm going to the Portland Expo, April 5th and 6th. That's Saturday and Sunday next month. No, August 5th and 6th. All right, so there you go. So no pot at the trade show because I, uh, yeah. All right, so this is the trade. This is what my booth looks like. Oh, um, all right, this is what my booth looks like. But see how it, Okay, so this is what my booth looks like, right? I've got a TV that changes, so there's a little bit of motion. I've got this backdrop. You saw the front of my booth, which the, the front of the tablecloth, which was meant for a six foot table, but I only have a five foot table, so. Um, so this is my booth. These are the vendors that pay me to produce a booth like this with their logos, and then I go and I sell my books at the booth, all right? so. It's just like any trade show. And, and I know you guys are, I know we're going to do more cannabis calls in a sec, but I don't want this $40 show special to be confused with any other show special. So I'm going to the Portland Expo and the MJ BizCon here in Las Vegas later this year. So this is what my vendors pay me a couple thousand bucks to do, right? I mean, some of them trade product, but whatever. One of the things we have is this, this flyer that I produce. And so these, we print 10,000 of these flyers. All right. I've got my vendors on here. Oh my gosh, NCWGS, Nickel City Wholesale Garden Supply, does these bad boy T5s. If you, my booth is, this is sort of in a corner, so it's a weird shape, right? But the booth is 10 feet long. And so people want to take pictures with the Grow Boss. I know it's weird when I say that, um, but people want to take pictures with the Grow Boss. So... We stand in front of, I mean, because it's not really an arms around me kind of a guy. Hey, the grow boss, put my arms around. You're wearing a tank top, cut down to here, and I'm, yeah, you know, I got a little bit of the Seinfeld, the little Jerry Seinfeld. You know what I mean? Like, what's up? You don't need to hug me. So we can sit over here in front. We can take a picture over here. Um, then, because so this is part of the package, right? So we sell shirts. We got them rolled up in different sizes. We got a little bin to sell shirts. We sell the five books, but not the No More Grow More cards, 40 bucks. And they come in this custom bag that I had printed. See all the vendor logos on there? I got, there we go. So there's that bag, right? So we've got this free handout book that we give out to everybody that walks by. We got a bag that has all of the books in it that you get from the Grow Book and Equipment, right? The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, right? The 420 Guide, 20 Week Tracker, Gardens and Grow Rooms. Oh, All About Nutrients. And in the All About Nutrients pack, okay, so you get all about nutrients as a book but then you get a clonex sticker and a grow boss sticker and another sticker from clonex and some information about their root maximizer and a nickel city how much light do you need mondi card thermo flow card a clonex rooting gel card the grow boss troubleshooting five by seven the 
Grow Diamond, TNB information, all this stuff in a bag with their logos on it. Okay. So, listen, there's a lot of booths at these shows. And you look at them and you go to the shows. And I don't know if you've been, but... You know, there's a couple different types of shows, right? You can go into a smoker show, a, you know, like like um, uh, end user show, like where there's 50,000 people show up for a cannabis cup that come through like zombies. There's so many of them, they're 20 wide. The vendors go to these shows and they tell me they're 20 people wide walking through for hours. Like she says, the, they say the last thing that you want to do is be by the front door. Ah, that's the worst place you could be. But then there are shows like Indo Expo where you have, where it's sort of a little, uh-oh, where it's a little more uh, vendor-oriented, hydro stores, people that are now becoming facilities and growing in large quantities. So it becomes a little more appropriate for them, right? So that's the trade-off that's in there. And so I'm going to the Indo Expo. Now, not all these vendors are going to the Indo Expo, but I am. So we also produced a five by seven card of the Indo Expo map with my friends that are going on the map too. So I can hand you, oh, it's, oh man. Oh, I don't get it. So on one side, it says $40 show special. And on the other side, there's a map with vendors logos that'll give the pro that'll give them away. We got a little TV in the booth, but, and here's, and here's the big, but I'd like to point out because we were musing about just what I've done. And listen, I don't need any, I don't need any emails about humble bragging is my show and so i will put up a little warning humble bragging okay so this magazine that we put together and i'll this magazine that we put together my mic's working live stream okay all right so i would just like to point out that this magazine, which we printed 10,000 of, like the ads are like, and you may not see this, but the ads are like, watch the world championship of cloning while waiting for your plane. And there's, you know, one of my videos that I made with Chuck, and here's their ad right below it for Clonex. And so here's a little page from, you know, advertise with the Grow Boss that advertises the products that we do. You know, we have some article. You know, here's some creepy guy watching me on the one, two, three light rotation while he's in his room. You could watch Grow Boss videos in your room. You know, this is about this this whole thing is cannabis investing strategies. So there's four articles in here that are progressive about what you're what you're looking to do when in terms of investing in cannabis, because this is going to be given out at the trade shows. So TNB. Boom, while waiting in line, watch this video. Another article, dude, just love that dude in his cannabis shirt. Oh yeah, Thermoflow, here's a video you can watch how strong their ducting is. A little bit of advertising for the Grow Boss, Turbo Clones. Oh yeah, there's that. There's the uh, Bushmaster root video thing right there, yeah. The sponsors that are going with me. So, I'm just, you know, when I talk to my sponsors and advertisers, um, and I'm telling you this for a reason, I'll get to it in a sec. But when I talk to my sponsors and advertisers, 774, good morning. What up? Hey, give me one sec, okay? All right. All right, so when I talk to my sponsors or advertisers, like, this is the stuff that I show them. I'm like, look, who else puts out a magazine that people can take with them at the show about investing that shows them videos about with your products in them? So I get all these people to put them... I get all these people to put them together. I put all these people together in a magazine. I pass out the free magazine. I mean, you can buy my books at the show. You can read my magazine later. They go home, take my magazine. Boom says the grow boss right in there and now they know where to go to go back and buy all these products now the funny part is 
these people pay me to go to the show, print advertising about them, then these people buy these books, like the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, and then it has their product in it. Okay, whether you think I'm the best Grow Book or not, whether you like me or don't like me, the reality is that's a pretty good integrated strategy that we have. And this is the backdrop that goes to the shows, right? I mean, who else at a show has like a kit like this put together? I mean, okay, so what? Uh, they got uh, the Grow Bible. I mean, that's just one 350 page book. There's no trackers. I mean, okay. Um, okay, so I guess that, uh, that phone's blocked. Okay, so that's kind of what I do for my vendors. All right, 774, what can I do for you? All right, what's up? Um, so first of all, good morning. Oh, good uh, morning. Me and my friend, me and my friend are going to start growing. And to start off, we're going to, we're having a two by two by five foot tent be sent over. How many plants do you recommend to, like, fit in that? Is that, you think, only, like, good for one plant, two plants? Um, okay. Okay, I think I know best how to answer this question, okay? Let me... Hi. Let me show you this... Okay. All right, so you guys always see me go through this picture. So I'm going to tell you that if you look at the buckets, so I'll, I'll, I'm gonna add a little bit uh, a little bit to this. If you look at this bucket, I would like to say that these four buckets are a two by two space, okay? These four buckets are a uh -huh. two by two space. These two buckets are a two by two space. Um, so you tell me the bigger the plant gets, like, let's say you can fit these four buckets in week. You can do these four buckets in, uh, week number one. Uh, okay. And then you do these four buckets in week number two. And then you do these two buckets in week number three right i mean just physically the bucket size is larger and i don't believe you could put those two plants in at week three so are you actually looking at the video right now yeah it's a little delayed though yeah i know it's a little delayed so i'm going to smoke a bowl because i actually want you to see this and i want to smoke a bowl yeah, go <laughs> oh um skip plate um, I, I would give you a hug, my friend, if I could, and I am not big on touching people. So, you know, good for you. Um, yeah, oh, Prohibition Pioneer. Yeah, 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 I grow on you. Actually, I'm a good guy. The reality is you can't show up in my industry, do what I did, and be a good guy because if you're not cracking eggs, there's no way to... It's um, uh, it's an aggressive industry with 18 to 49 year old males, and so I'm just saying that to uh, that that to uh, <laughs> I to get you and, and as as a paramedic nurse to see all the nonsense with drugs and the addiction, uh, I would I would give you like yeah man hug though not like both arms like maybe fist bump for sure. Because if you're wearing like a tank top that's cut down to here, you know, the one that's, yeah, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to hug you. Okay. Do you see the pictures on here? Yeah, I see it. Okay. So you tell me, this is week three veg. You can only fit two plants in there. What are you going to do? Yep. Right. What are you going to do next week? So. The, the, the question is not how many plants you can fit in there. The question I always ask is, have you ever seen a full-grown cannabis plant? I mean... Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so here is... 
here is next week. Here is next week's picture. So you can put one plant at week four. Okay. So there's your answer. You can put yep. four plants in week one, four plants in week two, two plants in week three, one plant in week four. Just because as the plant gets bigger, so does the bucket and so does the plant. You see what I'm getting at? I, yeah. Okay. That's why I tell you guys, this is all relative. It's, this is not about plant count. Plant count is related to veg time. All right, listen, I totally appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Um, 812, what can I do for you? Bye, just missed 812's call. I tried to get off one call. I saw the other call. Ah, can't, uh, can't keep up. Hey, listen, 774, that was an excellent call. Thank you. Cooper, thank you so much. Ah, 812. 812, good morning. Hey, girl, ball. Howdy. How's it going? Dude, I, this, my desk has coffee and a bong on it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, my desk, my Sounds job's like a not good that morning, bad. huh? Yeah, my job's not that bad from 9 to 10 on Saturday and 9 to 11 on Sunday. It's not that bad. Right. I had a quick question for you. I got two 400 watt. A uh, guy just give them to him. I'm on my way to go pick them up now. Uh, I'm getting away from the LED because I was just having a lot of problem with it. Uh, I just couldn't figure it out. Uh, so I'm just going back to the old school. Did I veg with just one of them? And then once I turned the flower maybe a few weeks in, should I turn that other 400 on or should I wait more towards the end of flower to turn the other 400 on? <clears throat> Damn good question. I, the first thing that you said was that you had two 400 watt HIDs is that what you said yeah okay um I, I'm, I'm the answer is that's a great question let me describe the problem to you that we're discussing here what we're discussing is do you um maybe perhaps I can illustrate this better with a picture okay so you have two times 400 watt you said hid lights yes sir yes okay so you have two times 400 watts so the question for you is let me draw this out um Um, are you going to do that or are you going to do this? I think what we're asking is, and a lot of you get this confused because Okay, so if our canopy, no. yeah, no, no, I'm doing that. Sorry, I'm working. If our canopy okay. is two by right. four by two feet deep, then we have a 16 um, cubic foot canopy. And by 16 cubic foot canopy, dude, great question. Okay, so this is that picture that I show you guys where if you have a 400 watt light, this is page 49. If you have 400 watt light, you need two by four, two feet deep. If you want a 600 watt yield, if you want twice the yield, you need twice the canopy. And if you want three times the yield, you need three times the canopy. You need three times the light, you need three times the canopy. Okay. So the question becomes one of, are we doing two, two times four, or are we doing a four by four by two, or a, what? Four, oh, by four, or a two by four, two by, or a four by four by two. Yeah, so the question is always is, if you have one canopy, so you've, this canopy is, let's say, 10 weeks old, right? And you are four-week veg, 
six weeks worth of flour and you're let's say it's eight weeks old eight weeks old eight weeks old okay you got okay. four plants eight weeks old you're halfway into flour you are now at 100 percent light right the question is yes. if you have and and this at four weeks your garden would actually be 18 inches tall because over the next four weeks they're just going to grow this last little bit okay so you're going to turn full light on when you have almost a full garden blam the question becomes is is if you were to double the light as if down here but you had the same canopy you couldn't do that you would have to have a whole second volume of canopy if you want to double your light going from 300 to 400 over the same canopy is not the same thing as going from one 400 to two 400s so if you want to double your light literally from one to two you would have to double your canopy right right okay now okay. can you see that picture um yeah can you, can you see where i'm going with that yeah yeah I, I understand yeah think about it like the headlights of your car there's that little center spot where they overlap and then each is as bright so if you aim two lights at the same spot it gets brighter that's my whole argument about leds we're talking about space versus volume so if you come right back here if you come right back here and we do the same picture and if this is a 400 if this usually with leds it's it's brighter if this is a thousand watt light that requires a six by four and your led is compared to that your led is this big if it's the same amount of light i'm just saying it's the same amount of light what happens from here to here now leds right. yeah. leds i just want to say leds are fantastic for growing cannabis just like lecs des single ends t5s they all grow cannabis they are just as fantastic for growing cannabis as everything else now if you've been watching my videos uh, if you're watching webcasts that's funny that's my new line everything is fantastic leds just cost more that's my new line blam why because my hydro store has everything in it now and why you can't tell from these pictures because there's big tents in the way of my hydro store i have definitely been bringing in lots of new stuff so we have lecs and des now and we have right we have the c Dude, I, don't even know. I don't even know what I ordered. There were so many. I do know, however, <laughs> that I or I had always ordered two flower and one grow of any light because we sell more flowers than grows. Plus, if I'm going to sell a three light kit, I'll always want two flowers and one grow. So I bought a couple of three fifteens, a couple of the six thirties, a couple of DES. Yeah, so we just spent an enormous amount of money on inventory and redoing the store. And I'll show you all that next week because this will all be shipped out to the Portland show on a pallet. It'll get hung up. It's super easy. It's just a couple of clips at the top. I've got, we're shipping like, I think like 400 of these kits for me to sell. Swipe a card at the show. I got the books to, I mean, I got the shirts to add to it. Oh, with the vendors on the back. Oh. Yeah, vendors on the back. All right. All right, so did you have any other questions for me? I sort of lost it there. No, no you're okay, man. I appreciate it, and I thank you for taking the time. Okay, I appreciate the call. All right. Thank, thanks so much. Yeah, so you can tell how prepared I am for the show. Oh, it's 920. Oh, my God. can't believe I started early. I was literally just sitting here eating my breakfast. <laughs> there's 55 people watching me eat my breakfast <sighs> there's 140 people watching me smoke cannabis and by the end of the week by the end of next week this video will have 2500 views minimally uh, 916 good morning hey how you doing today Grobot? hey I was coming I had a um 
a quick question. I was wondering if you could uh, possibly go over, I understand all the relationships and how complex it is of everything, but in regards to nutrients and, and figuring out um, the PPL, PPM to milliliter conversion with given the relationship of light uh, versus canopy and all that kind of stuff and how you do that calculation to adjust your uh, nutrients uh, knowing that most of your uh, lines are all set up for like a thousand watt grow with 10 plants, you know, and it's like I have a 600 watt light with, you know, how do you go about adjusting that PPM so you can ship through the gears and feed them appropriately? Does it understand my question? Yes, sir, I do. So, and you can, and, and you can take it offline too. You don't have to keep me online to cover it. Okay, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Hey, 910, call me back in a couple minutes. Now, some of you guys like those long form questions that I do, long form answers that I do. So, I am prepared to give you a long form and answer. We're going to go over how to mix and use nutrients. Give me one yes. sec. Watch. But we're also going to go over how to think about them. And I know trying to calculate how many nutrients and how often you should feed with them can seem overwhelming at first. And that's because everybody has been explaining it to you all wrong until now. So keep watching and I'll show you everything you need to know about nutrients. And the truth is brutal. And brought to you by Humboldt Nutrients. And this is episode number one. And the theme is nutrient basics because I know how very excited you are to read and precisely follow all the okay so that's the video that about this hang on a second now this video is called um the truth about nutrients and so, take it off the cap. so that video is called the truth about nutrients and it's a six-part series where i literally go over and i graph Okay, so I go over Your stories, which is exactly how I wrote my book, the grow book, an uh, equipment guide. The I just love this video because these bottles on the shelves of hydro. Ah, uh, I love those hydro stores out in Texas. These guys were so nice. Shit, it's like the candy aisle. Yeah. Okay, so there's nutrients in every store, right? And that's the thing. Every store sells shitloads of nutrients. And you've heard me say that nutrients are worthless. So, my observation is, I mean, oh, this dude was so funny. I love, I just, this dude is awesome. I love this dude. Okay. So, here's the reality about nutrients. When we talk about nutrients, there's a couple of factors you have to consider. One of the things that you have to consider is, is, I'm stalling because I just saw what I was looking for. This picture, um, come on. I just had the, okay, so what am I, I'm dicking around here. Here we go. Um, we've, we've determined, We've determined that all nutrients are based on minerals and they're just different formulas of the same mineral, right? Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium over here, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur for flour, manganese, copper, copper, zinc, cobalt um yeah what looks like our micros are right here mag calcium right here right here's our n our p and k is over here so these are <coughs> everybody's so worried about uh stalling balling everybody's so worried about their uh their nutrients and shit just about uh, their butt absorbing metals 
everything in this column is an alkali metal so these are transition metals right here the zinc the cobalt the copper um, this one right here is alkaline earth so mag calcium uh, where's silica silica should be si here it is silica right here so the blues are non-metals so nitrogen phosphorus silica mag is a metal anyway so these are all the minerals that go into all the nutrients you can get lost playing with uh you can get lost playing with that stuff all day right but that's what i'm saying so this is this thing about nutrients all of them are just different formulas of the same thing so what we're talking about now for instance in the last caller two callers ago we had talked about how many plants you could put in a two by two space and as the plants physically got bigger you could physically put less in there the buckets got bigger okay so as the plants get bigger and as the buckets get bigger and like we talked about last week transitioning from a one to a three to a five or to a transitioning as you're transitioning you have to consider a couple of factors one is are you going to be able to make the next light still green? Is it going to be yellow when you have to accelerate? Or should it be red? And if it's going to be red, should I just take my foot off the gas pedal now and coast? When do I start braking? There are so many factors that go into that, right? All I'm suggesting is that the relationship between plant size, bucket size, the amount, uh, the relationship between, uh, uh, you you heard me talk about media when you went from a one gallon to a three gallon there were two gallons of media with no roots in it right there are two gallons of media you take a one gallon bucket you put it in a three gallon container and at that instant there are two gallons of media with no roots right okay so if you know there's a little extra buffer then you might wait a little longer so you go into flower let's say you go from a three to a ten you got seven gallons of buffer. If you were watering at 500, whatever the number is, if you were watering at 500 at the end of veg, when you go into flower, if you water that bucket with 500, let's say you were watering with 500 twice a week at the end of eight weeks in veg, you're in a three gallon bucket, right? We know four, first four weeks veg, one gallon, next four weeks veg, three gallon, move into flower into a 10, so we decrease our watering frequency. Okay, decrease the watering frequency now. So, the question becomes is, when you go into flower, and this is a big deal because the plant is the same, right? When you end, when you end veg on Sunday and you transplant from a three to a 10, Monday when the lights come on, it's the same fucking plant. Now, you might have thinned it out. You might have put more or fewer plants. You might have stretched your plants out. You might have thinned them and lowered them in a trellis. All of those things you have to adjust for in relationship with the light, just like you have to adjust for the relationship in the nutrients. And then we have to tie them both together. So the relationship with the nutrients is this, is if you were watering twice a week at the eighth week of veg, so you had a big plant, three gallon bucket, right eight weeks of veg you're in a three gallon butt pot you're at 500 twice a week okay that means you're at a thousand once a week we can convert it either way don't care now we go into flour we go from a three to a ten now if you were watering a three gallon bucket twice a week and you're in a ten gallon now first you're going to be watering once a week again why because every three gallons lasts every six gallons lasts one week because you're watering twice a week so we're at six gallons that gives us one week and four more gallons so we're going to be watering at least once a week at that point maybe every 10 days i mean that's just if you're in a three gallon bucket and you've got seven gallons you know what i mean it's going to be two weeks mathematically i was doing the wrong math it should be like two weeks so you won't have to water for two weeks again why because you have three times the buffer if three gallons dried out twice a week and you have nine gallons that means that's three weeks worth of see what i'm saying no not three weeks 
if you have the water, if, if you if twice a week would be six gallons. So one week that'll leave you four gallons. So you know, see what I'm saying? It's like ten days or so. I'm just saying if you go from a three that you're watering twice a week. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. What I'm really trying to say is that. <laughs> That's what I'm really trying to say. I'm serious about this. Okay. <clears throat> now that I've worked this out, if you go from a 3 to a 10, you're watering twice a week in a 3. When you go to a 10, you're going to be watering once every 10 days. So, not just that, though. Not only are you going to be watering once every 10 days, but if you also think about it, there are 7 gallons of media. Soil, cocoa, whatever mix you think mattered there's going to be two and a half times the amount you started with so that means that there's going if you've literally fed with 500 the plants in their center little spot three gallons they would consume all the nutrients but there would still be 500 ppm in all of the media around it now if you went from a three to a five whew, that's a different story but that's why i tell you, you never supersize from a 12 to a 14 ounce drink you go from like a 12 ounce to like a 64 ounce, two gallon, you know what I mean? So what I try to do is I try to put this in perspective, both by giving you the logistics of working its way through and giving you the silly example of an extreme example too. So you tell me how much it matters. What I'm suggesting is that, that there's a couple of things to account for when we talk about nutrients, right? And transplanting is a hell of a place to use that as an example, because not only is it the buffer, but you're going to the buffer because we're increasing plant size, but also because you're shaping the plant and you might be trellising it. So that's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Now, in terms of the amount of nutrients, think about this like a four, six, eight cylinder car. 400 watt light, 600 watt light, 1000 watt light. If you have a four cylinder car, you do not need the same amount of fuel as a six cylinder. And an eight cylinder needs more. And an eight cylinder hot rod needs even more. So I'm just suggesting that there's, that there's also this relationship between the amount of light you have. Because if you have a 400 watt light, then you're going to finish with a 400 watt canopy. A 400 watt canopy is two by four, two feet deep. If you finish a two by four, two foot deep canopy, it is what it is. It's a pound and a half wet. It's a half pound dry. So if you're finishing with 400 watts worth of light, part of this relationship is you might be finishing with a thousand watts worth of light. So let me ask you this in terms of, in terms of plants, this, I will show you this. Bah. This, okay, so check, mic check, okay. All right, keep it simple, right? Um, okay. So, okay, there we go. Hopes and dreams. The Dude, you are always funny, the Paul XYZ. Dude, you are always funny. Okay, these plants are 10 weeks old. All 10 weeks were spent in veg. These plants are 10 weeks old. They're also six weeks deep into flower. So let's just talk straight PPM. Now everybody knows flower wants more PK. And everybody knows that grow wants more N. Okay, so forget the relationship. And remember when I'm talking about the relationship of N and P and K, After all this time, I still have not tagged one book with all the nonsense that I have in here. 
I have been so busy getting ready for the show, finishing the videos. But listen, this stuff ships this week. So within a couple of weeks, I am excited to get all my nonsense done and be able to fine tune a couple of things. I got to literally lift the keyboard to get the wireless to connect to right over there. Okay, Grow Diamond. More N than PK. Um, um, no, no, I, I don't. Okay, somebody apologize for no. You can't, not allowed to cause any problems on the live chat. Yeah, no race, nothing on the live chat. Listen, I don't care what race you are. Don't cough on me when you're talking to me. <laughs> don't sit there and wipe your face, pits, dig in your ears, um, and then reach out to shake my hand. Don't do those things. I literally sit there and watch you and talk to you. And you're talking the whole time. And I think to myself, at some point, you're going to give me your money and want to leave after you bought the right equipment, of course. And you're going to reach out to shake my hand. So, you know, let's all agree. Let's just all agree right here that from now on, that from now on, huh. oh, <laughs> I thought that TV screen was a mistake in the program because it was changing. Okay, so let's all agree from now on, fist bump. This bump is like um, uh, demolition man sex where you both touch the orb. Remember the thing where you both put the headband on. So let's all fist bump from now on. That's why I'm just going to leave mine out there because I'm not going to shake anymore. Right there. I've made that decision. I think we should all agree right there because we're all a bunch of nose pickers. Sweat wipers, pit diggers, butthole scratchers. <laughs> You just don't have to do it in front of me. Maybe cover your mouth when you cough. All right. Um, okay, these plants are 10 weeks old. These plants are 10 weeks old too. Now, aside from the difference in N and PK during veg and flower, if we forget the, the concentration of nutrients, if we just forget which nutrients that we're using or what N or what PK, if we just sidestep all that and we just talk in terms of PPM, let's be clear. If you have a four week veg, if you have a four week veg, okay. Now this, is all in the calculations in the back of the grow book. These are the calculations that tell you PPM right up here, total PPM. So this always is based on two things and they are, the two things are time and light. Because if you're finishing with a 400 watt light, it's different if you're finishing with a 600 and it's different if you're finishing with a thousand watt light. If you're finishing with, now in all cases, if you veg for four weeks and flower for eight, in all cases, you will be at 100% light about four weeks into flower, right? Eight weeks, four week veg, four weeks into flower, you'll be at 100% light and you'll finish. That's sixth gear. Now, about two weeks into flower, you'll be in fifth gear somewhere in there right fifth gear is about 300 watts now the as soon as you go into flower you'll be the same when you go into flower you'll be doing the same light as when you're vegging when you finish vegging you're in third gear right third gear is 200 watts why because veg is one half flower and if sixth gear is 400 watts then veg is 200 watts but if sixth gear is 600 watts then veg is 300 watts so you would need 300 watts in veg because if you take a 200 watt veg and you start flowering under a 600 remember when you go into flower veg and flower cross in terms of time the same light so when you end veg you go into flower for the next two weeks with the same light why because you probably thinned the plant and lowered her into a trellis so if you go into flower at 200 and you start right then next week you'll two weeks will be at 300 and two weeks will be at 400 and 
six weeks will be at 500, you'll never get to 600 watts. So you have to end veg, top a third. You have to start flower, bottom a fourth. That means you have to over veg 207, call me back in a minute. That means I don't care what week you, I don't care what week you fuck up in, right? That's one of those things. Don't care what week you fuck up and your plants will get too tall, run to the light and the buds will burn. However, if no one week is any more important than anything else, let me just suggest that the transition from veg into flower, always, always grow them too big. Why? Because if you don't start flower with the top in every hole, where are you going to put the bud? You're not going to get another top later. The tops will get taller, but you're not really going to get more tops that fit the canopy. And this is all about canopy control, right? I mean, look at how nice that canopy is. And in every picture that you see of successful gardeners, their, their gardens are just packed fucking full of plants. Look at that. Okay, Levy Hodge. So my observation here, your grow shop says water and feed every day. Listen, if you were in a bucket so small that you had to water every day, not hydro, not hydro, because your shop would have said you're going to flood a couple of times a day. But if you're in like Rockwell or you're in media and you have to water every day, you're in too small of a bucket. That means you are entirely consuming all the water. The plant is entirely consuming all the water and nutrients every day. You're in too small of a bucket. For no other reason than if you fell and couldn't get up, how are you going to water? There's no buffer. And this is cannabis. And if I tell you that the mentality has to be as little as possible and you're doing stuff every day, then you're out of the zone. And the highest probability of success is to do what successful growers do. Find out what they all have in common. That's why I don't entertain experimenters. Because when you come to my store and you say you're experimenting, I don't engage you. Tell me what you need. I'm going to just sell it to you. Why? Because experimenting in, in literally translates into failure. Why? Because you experiment until you get it right. Then you stop experimenting. The fuck? You think you're going to discover something nobody before you has discovered? You're just going to kill your shit like everyone else before you. You're not going to come up with a bud that no one else had before. You can name whatever strain you want. It's all the same shit. So that's what I'm suggesting. All I've done, and I've read all the other books. I bought them all. No, not all of them. I did not buy Three Alight. I have seen it. It is a beautiful book, high gloss, close-up pictures of everything you could see on YouTube. Super nice book. If you're into $500 books, I saw one in my store. My customer said he collected books. Great. <laughs> Otherwise, this has, it has, it isn't, there's nothing, there's no secret to growing cannabis. I don't teach you how to grow cannabis. Don't care what book you buy. I don't teach you how to grow cannabis. That's why it's the grow book and equipment guide. Because I teach you how to use the equipment and I teach you how not to fail. You just need to not kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest. That's the reality. So that's and that's why like you can start to hear the difference in the customer questions and the caller questions when they come into my store after listening to my videos the um since i've started giving the the growers the lingo to use the the way to quantify the amount of light yield light space ratio once we've quantified it we can all sort of talk in terms of the the same so if we agree that if you're going to go into flower back to the caller question if we agree that you're going to go into flower and that different plants of different sizes want different amounts then we have to sort of quantify what the nutrient bottles say too that's why all nutrient bottles are based on a thousand watt light 10 plants veg for four weeks in one gallon buckets and then moved into fives threes whatever threes or fives that's what every nutrient bottle is based on it has to be I mean, they have to base it on something because if nutrients are based on the amount of light and the size of the plant, as they get bigger, you need more, then we have to have some sort of standard. I mean, we can call it the Keurig standard, how many Keurig something is, but for some reason, I think that name's already taken. <laughs> okay. 910. Good morning, 910. Hey, what's up, bro boss? Good morning. What's up? first want to say thank you a couple weeks ago man I called and you gave me some simple advice and my plants are uh, 
doing better. The whatever was damaged was done, but the new growth isn't getting damaged anymore. So thanks for that. And uh, another thing is, I got a <clears throat> a few seeds I popped. I got them going. I'm planning on keeping one mother plant and start cloning, but it's my first time cloning. I was wondering if I take a rooted clone, should I go straight into a one gallon in flour, or should I put it in a solo cup first, get it a little bit bigger, then go to a one gallon, or would that be too too small of a pot to go to the flour from a solo cup to a one gallon, you know what I mean? Which one would be better, just go from straight to a one, or start it with a solo cup first? Okay, so let me ask you, if you put, if you took a clone out of a out of a uh, root riot starter plug right so you got them under the the 24 watt hang on hang on okay so you got them on a dome. You got this two foot light over them. They've got roots in the. They got roots coming out of them, and you're gonna do something to this now. So you've got them in a little starter plug, and you're going to put them in, let's say, a red cup. If you were to put them in a red cup, what light would you put them under? Uh, probably. Well, I got a two foot eight ball but I only I'll keep four of them on and they're split up so it'll be two bulbs so 54 watts total 50 watts roughly so it's two so it's, you know two two foots <laughs> okay two two foots if you put them in one gallon buckets what light would you put over them well since they're kind of spread out more now since the things are bigger they'll be kind of stretching outside of the light i'll probably turn on all the lights that i have and then push the light up a little bit higher so it'll cover the space but i'll just push the density just a little bit further away and then maybe lower it later <coughs> sir I, I i don't know how to express to you that you made my point i appreciate that so much because i was just saying that that there are lots of books out there, but nobody defines how to use the equipment. And one of the big things that I always try to impress upon you guys is, I don't care if you put one one bulb, uh, one two foot one bulb, one foot away, or you put two bulbs two feet away, or you put four bulbs three feet away, or you put the sun 96 million miles away. I don't care. It's all the same light on the plant. You just have to continue to back the light off depending on how bright your light is. What I'd also like to make the observation of is that, is that you had the words to describe moving the light further away as it got brighter because the bucket size physically got larger. So if you put a small plant into a bigger bucket, you're gonna throw a lot of light at the soil. That's what we're trying to avoid. Also, if the number one problem is too much light, might I suggest that you go from a one bulb to a two bulb in a red cup? Because it seems to me like you're using less light. If you go from a one bulb to a two bulb in a red cup, right? Because more light further away literally has the words more light right in the sentence. So if they're under a one bulb now, and I specifically asked you and I led you, I mean, I asked you that question just to make a point. <clears throat> if you thought bigger bucket, you thought more light. I'm always suggesting less light. I'm suggesting, well, I'm always suggesting the correct amount of light, which is usually less light than you guys think it is. So do you see my point? No, no, I, I understand what you're saying. This is actually my first time using this T5 because I do run LEDs and I want to veg with T5 now. I want to kind of start maybe going that route. But my question was, would a one gallon be adequate to flower in if I went from a red cup to a one gallon? Or would that be just too much? It's not big enough to flower in. Or would it take a, just a cutting that's rooted and put that in a one gallon? Would that have, that seems like more adequate space. Which okay. one would you recommend or you think it's adequate <laughs> space? And it's in soil too, so. Yes, yes, sir. It, but the, the, the question, the, 
the the consideration here is that you will have to have one plant per square in that trellis. You will be doing a sea of green, correct? Yes, that's what I'm kind of leaning towards. To okay, kind of get a little faster. so if you're doing a sea of green, then then you have to tell me what's your finishing, what light are you finishing with? 400 watts in a 2x4. Okay, so you'll definitely want a T5. Let me show you my sea of green pick. Okay. Nope, this is, this is my sea of green pick. Now, if you're in a 2x4, I would just like to point out that you will need this these are so this is uh literally like uh, i always use this picture but this is this is a uh five by five this is a five by five space so if you're gonna do a two by four space you're going to need like you're gonna need like you know like 24 plants or something like that right yeah, I was thinking nine plants no. for two by two, so eighteen oh, plants yeah. total. I was gonna do eighteen. It was gonna be eighteen one gallons. That might be enough. You'll have to see because yeah, you because will you, literally you, look at this picture. You will literally have to put a top in every hole. That's just straight up what you'll have to do. Yeah, put a top in every hole. Yes. Now, that is a sea of green. So if you are in a sea of green, it's yeah. literally a three day to a one week veg time. So yes, sir. Remember also in a sea of green that you do not pinch the top, you do not fim it, you only strip the bottom, and you grow buds straight up. No side yes, branching. I, no I, side I branching. I, yeah, yeah, I, I know. This is my first time doing it, and I'm just doing it to get faster rotations, and just maybe just keep one small mother plant in the two by two, and then just take cuttings from her. I was just wondering about the, the pot size. And also, I have three strains going and I'm going to pick one and the rest I'm going to throw outside to flower. For a sea of green, um, I've never done it before. What do you, would you recommend? Indica, a hybrid, or a sativa? What typically does better in this situation? Because I've never done a sea No, green. no, it doesn't matter because you're going to have to, you're going to have to lollipop it. Sativas just get taller. But regardless of how yes. tall it gets, you're responsible um, you sir so uh, just think of it it doesn't matter if it's many branches on one plant if you allow one but you have to get them all into a trellis for this to work and if one bud even if they get taller it's your job to keep them in that space so you'll there's going to be some side branching early on so about two weeks well 10 days into flower you're probably going to go clip some side branches and again a couple of days later because you're only looking for this one bud per square it's your job to get that one bud per square i mean it may be one square above the other because you're going to do two trellis layers but beyond that you just have to put them in that square yeah okay Okay. I was just wondering the mainly the bucket size. I don't want to go too small because I've never used a one gallon. I usually do five gallon plants, but I'm going to a one gallon. Of course. I'm kinda, I don't know if I should go from the, yeah, the cutting, just go straight yes. to a one and straight flower one. or just. Or you'd okay. be transplanting during flower. In a sea of green, you go from the starter to the, to the bucket, final bucket, because you're only vegging for three days. Three days on eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just skip the solo cup step. Uh, skip solo cups. But but remember, remember, you still have to scale the light. You still have to go from small to large, right? You can't You have to go from yes. two bulbs in week one to you have to get, you know, four bulbs by week three, six bulbs by week five. You got to have all eight bulbs on by week three five, six, so you finish with the last three weeks, right? Yeah. Right. Got it. No, that's, that's what I needed to hear about the, my 
I've grown before. I'm not the best, but I mean, for a sea of dreams, my first time, I just wanted to make sure about the <clears throat> doing it the proper way because I'm tired of fucking up. So, <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah, basically. Yes, sir. I appreciate the call. Yeah, basically, it comes down to uh, that real simple thing that I always tell you guys: don't kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest. Um, growing cannabis has nothing to do with botany. It has nothing to do with the equipment that you buy. It's all, for the most part, the same, different versions of the same shit. And remember, there is no advertiser who ever said, meh, we're about the same as all the others. A little more expensive, a little less, works about the same. But 85% of our customers fail, so who really cares? There's never really been an advertising campaign. So when you come to my store and tell me you did all this research on the manufacturer's website, just remember, that's their website. What else are they going to put on there? Someone else's research. When you look at grow rooms that are successful, you'll notice they have one thing in common. They are just packed fucking full of good looking buds. You can't see the floor. It's just, you don't have no idea how many plants are in this garden. Why? Because you can't see the floor. All I'm suggesting is there's this relationship, just like the caller asked, between nutrients. And if you're not going to be at peak light until week six, you know, half week four flower, you're not going to be at peak nutrients until week four flower. So if you have a 10 week garden, like four week veg, six weeks into flower, let's say, you're not gonna be at peak nutrients till right before you start flushing. It's always too much. It's always too much. That's why when you look at the back of my grow book and equipment guide, I literally just show you this mag deficiency. That's what it looks like, page 150. That's what it looks like, that's what it looks like. That's, there is no chart that shows, I don't have that graph that shows you all the different nutrient problems because that doesn't exist. pH lockout doesn't exist. What are the top five problems when growing cannabis? Too much light, too much water, too many nutrients. Spray for bugs, not enough cow mag in a healthy garden. Literally, one of the problems is in a healthy garden. It's not enough mag in a healthy garden, which really isn't even a problem, except you could be doing better, so it's still a problem. All I'm just saying is that Healthy gardens never get bugs. Now I'm going to try to squeeze one more caller in. 209, good morning. Hey, what's up, hey, uh, <clears throat> I just got home, so I, I haven't even been on the um, the YouTube. But, um, I got <clears throat> I got some facts that you... <laughs> matter of fact, I got some seeds that you started. And they're 14, 15 days in. And they're big ass shit, but well not big, but for their age. And um, one is showing, well not one, but a lot of them are showing deficiencies. Uh, I haven't fed yet. Uh, what should I feed them with? Like PPM wise. Oh, uh, I, I, you said seedling. Yeah. Okay. What are the what media are you in? Cocoa or soil? Uh, it's uh, black and gold soil. It has like barely any any nutrients in it. Okay, but that's okay because and my uh, other half are in promix. The other half are in what? Are in promix. Uh, it has no nutrients in it. Okay. Um. Clonex solution is the only thing that you feed baby baby plants with. And you'll literally feed Clonex yeah, solution. Yeah, I bought that yesterday. Oh, three mils in a water bottle like this. So like a half, uh, half a liter? No, uh, I'm not, 17 ounces. I haven't got home yet. So, okay, 17 ounces. Oh, 17 ounces? Yeah, in like 16 ounces. You know, three mils in 16 ounces. A teaspoon in 16 ounces. All right. Yeah. All right, All right cool. listen, have a safe drive. Okay, so there's the thing, is that this is all relative. You have to figure out max Q. What is the max you're ever going to give and when you're going to give max Q? Then you have to figure out minimum. What's the min, what's the max? Draw a line between them and suddenly, you have a PPM scale or a light scale. Why? 
because the bigger they get, the more light they get, the more nutrients they need, regardless of whether they're N or PK. Once you know they want more nutrients, the question then is, do you give N, PK? And that's, I mean, you could pretty much buy any nutrient bottle, right? Because there is no Chevy ad that says, hey, we make cars that are about as good as Ford. There is no Dodge ad that says, hey, <laughs> we don't make, we, you won't see our cars after five years. They don't, don't worry, don't focus on the price. You don't see that. So I'm just saying, you know, there are some vehicles like, dude, there are still Honda Preludes and CRXs on the road. 240Zs. I, there are just some brands that just last forever. So all I'm suggesting is <laughs> take marketing with a grain of salt. And growing cannabis is not magic. There is no rocket scientist. You don't need to know botany or about cell elongation. You don't need to know about the difference between stem cells. You don't need to know any of that. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Everything, if you just don't kill your shit, you don't need my book. If you don't kill your shit, you don't need to know how not to kill your shit. If you're killing your shit, then you need to know how not to kill your shit. But then none of these products are gonna work if you're killing your shit with too much light, too much water, or too many nutrients. You're just gonna kill your shit, right? So it doesn't matter how much money you spent on your life. That's what I'm saying. The first truth about growing is don't kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest. That's why your third grow is your first grow because you're gonna kill it the first time. After you listen, you won't kill it the second time. By the time you do this the third time, you'll be like, oh shit, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, I can't imagine on the last caller that a seedling ran out of nutrients in 15 days. I believe there's too much light. I'm not even sure if you can overwater in that fast, but I believe there's too much light. I mean, the last caller, just because he went into a bigger bucket psychologically, he had more light. Blah, blah, blah. If you've been watching this show, you've probably noticed that it's always the same thing. I don't even teach you how to grow. I'm just moderately funny, get high in front of the camera and teach you how not to fail. And then I get to go to trade shows and go take cannabis investing and go sell my books and go meet the other books that I make fun of. <laughs> I always look forward to that. <laughs> Listen, I'd love to have all the other books call my show. If you're going to read one book, you're going to read, read them all. I read them all. I read them all before I read mine. I read them again before mine. I would advertise another book on this show. It'd be like the Grow Book and Equipment Guide and some other book that I don't, you know what I mean? Like, there are a lot of books out there. <laughs> I can't even like... There's my, there's my front door. I can't see my front door from where I am, but I will tell you, we've really been working on the, uh, the store, like getting it ready. Like it's really hot in Vegas, right? Like all light is heat. That's why you put that sunshade in your window. So your car doesn't get too fucking hundred degrees hot, right? So it only gets 140 hot. Why? Because all lights heat. That's why I don't care what light you use. LEDs, T5, CMHs, DEs, SEs. Yeah, I'm sure there's more CFLs. Yeah. All right. Oh shit, I forgot uh I forgot uh Um Yeah. That's mostly the end of my show. I started the show just sitting here, getting high, doing nothing, eating breakfast, because I had no idea. Ended the show. I don't even have my usual sponsors behind me, because I had to change the backdrop, because I'm, I'm going to the show. I'm getting called up to the big time. 
That's the banner that goes in the back of my show. The TV that I take with me. Thermo flow. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I've been, uh, wait, wait. I've been practicing getting better at ending the show. All right, I just wanted to thank, oh, New York John, I totally appreciate that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, I know. Oh, shit. Dude, what's the deal of the week? I wanted to do that. Oh, so I forgot to bring up. I've got, dude, I've got some Nanolux 1000 watt. <laughs> I've got some Nanolux 1000 watt ballasts. You can have for literally like new in a box, 120 bucks each. Um, I've got some 600 watt Solus Techs. Dude, those are damn nice ballasts. Dude, 600 watt used Solitex dimmable. You can have them for literally like a hundred bucks each, but you have, you're gonna give me 300 for all three. I, I don't even have it in front of me. I sold the uh, Blue Lab meter at the end of last week, like literally, like right after I opened the store, I sold the Blue Lab meter. I've still got that Hannah one. It wasn't, it didn't go for 90. I'll sell that Hannah meter for $80. I'll have a couple of more products up here for you to see. Uh, <laughs> I totally forgot I wanted to do that. Clones to trichomes. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Don't kill your shit. Great show. I appreciate that, hopefully, Green. Ah, oh, dude, you guys are so funny. You guys are so funny. Dude, an, an army of people. Uh, you know, okay, I'll tell you a story about the dispensaries here in, in Nevada. All of a sudden, we had like in 100 days, like 50 dispensaries open. Dude, and you'd go into the dispensaries and there was so much effort. They were like giant living rooms with like sales counters around the edges. There, the amount of energy that growers have to put into the project when it goes legal is unfucking believable If we could channel all of that energy into something useful, dude. And then they shut them all down. There was like, people were just like set free. They were just opening businesses. Oh, dude, it was spectacular. <laughs> I remember going, trying to sell my magazine, meeting like, there were like meth people. I remember like opening up my book and we were all sitting down and <laughs> I remember looking at them and we were like, what, what, what would you like to talk to us about advertising? I was like, whoa, I just got a phone call. <coughs> oh, it was crazy. Paul Baudet, thanks so much. Yeah, I, I did. I've, I, I did read up on him. I did. All I'm saying is perhaps you guys should come and work at the counter at the hydro store. Because, <coughs> I mean, I didn't learn all this stuff from my failures. Uh, literally. What I did was to write this book right here. I'll tell you exactly what this book is. Um, so I got a hydro store because I got hurt on the job being a paramedic. I bought a hydro store because it made so much money. And in, in, in immediately in five days, it was apparent to me that it was, it was the same question over and over. Like literally, I was writing down questions. In five days, it was obvious. It's the same questions. So... I went out and I read every book again to find the answer to those five questions. And I sent growers home, like the first hundred growers, here's nitrogen for this question. That didn't work. Oh, here's mag. Oh, sure, that sure shit worked. I have no, I hate growing. I have no idea to grow. It's anything other than cannabis. It's slow, it's fucking painful. My face swells up the first and last eight days. But I'll tell you what my book is. My book is specifically how to use all the equipment and avoid failure because that's what I see. I don't teach you how to grow. I teach you how to think about it. I can't teach you how to grow. I'm not there. All I could do is impress upon you the knowledge that it takes to avoid failure. And if you know every failure point, like in my no more grow more cards, 
because I already know every problem you guys are going to have. If you just avoid failure at every level, you will have some modicum of success. And once you have some modicum of success, that's your second grow, you'll learn how to grow on your third. Just like driving a car, you got better at it. Just like the new guy at the job doesn't know how to do your job. All I'm suggesting is that <clears throat> there is no knowing how to grow cannabis. There is only how not to kill your shit and recognize problems. That's it. So when I make fun of all the other books, listen, it's the same information. This is how you take a clone. I'll look at you in the eye and tell you. Clones don't require anything. If you take them from a healthy plant, they'll root all by themselves. Now, in an indoor garden, you may want to accelerate the process. Oh, sure, shit, you're gonna want, you're gonna want that. I mean, right, right. I mean, look, if you've got a lot of clones, and you're doing, and you're doing, um, um, if you're doing this, you're gonna want, right? I mean, this is, all right, but, I mean, these are the roots after 14 days. Look at how big those roots are. All I'm suggesting is you're not going to get that without a healthy garden and Clonex and a turbo cloner and Clonex solution and microbes. You can't get that without all that. And if you start with a six shitty plant, doesn't matter what you have, right? So that's all I'm saying is. I know that there's lots of ways to do this and there's lots of opinions on this, but the reality is it all starts with a healthy plant. So unless your book literally says on the first line like mine does, none of it matters. It just requires a healthy plant. Now let me tell you all the way people fail. This has nothing to do with that. No, 2-0, and I can't take your call today because I got to end the show. Listen, you guys are fantastic. That's the end. I got to go open up the door. I hear someone knocking. I appreciate it. Thank you. One more bowl. And then I'm going to go open up the door.